What kind of a role model do you want to be to younger girls? A strong woman. That's the most empowering thing I could be. And somebody that helps other people realise their dreams, like they can look at me and think, well, she can do it. I can do it. Who has been a, an, a hero to you? As you've been coming up, someone you, you looked up to personally. I love Beyonce. I just think she's such a beautiful person inside and out, apart from what she does on the stage, which is obviously incredible and aspirational. I just like her as a woman. She's empowering. And I like that. Well, what's your earliest memory of your relationship with your own mother? Oh, wow. Me mother? God, that's a question I've never been asked. She, um. She used to always pull faces if we were misbehaved in the supermarket. You'd get the lip, we call them the lips. She goes, <laughs> and then you know you're in the trouble when you get home. How? I have a lot of those memories. There was five of us running crazy at all times, so we'd often, somebody would get the lips. How has she helped shape the woman that you've become today? It's actually a bit like role reversal with my mother, if I'm completely honest. I'm like the mother. She's like the child. So, um, it's an odd relationship. I tell her off more than she does me. And what do your other brothers and sisters do? I have an older brother that is a tattoo artist. And my sister has three kids and one on the way. So she's heavily pregnant. My little brother actually works with me now. Um, and I have another brother that is in prison. Can you tell me about the first tattoo you ever got? The first tattoo I ever got, I was 16. And we, my sister was having the first grandchild of the family. And we all got a little symbol for him. And I got a teeny little Tweety Bird. And you were telling me that you've, um, you've just recently had work done on your a tattoo on your back? Two summers ago, um, I got a new tattoo where I joined, it's still not finished actually, my back tattoo and another tattoo I had all merged into one. So I've got actually a really big tattoo across my back. And what, what is it that you like so much about tattoos? It's more, I, I, it's like body art and I think it's reflective of someone's personality. I'm always drawn to people that have tattoos. Um, I don't know what it is really. I think it's it's very much one of those things you either like them and you're attracted to that sort of body art or you're not, but I just am. You're coming up to the release of your third album now and you've worked with some incredible talents. Who was responsible for, for those, those collaborations? Did you go out there and say, to Teo Cruz, I want to work with you or did they approach you? I worked with Teo um, on the first album and I'm a big fan of his music too, so that was a natural relationship. I already have a relationship with Will I Am. Um, and Wretch 3 too actually heard a song I did called Screw You and he wanted to be on that record so that was actually him come to me which was a lovely feeling. Um, but no, the album was more so this album more than ever. I wanted to put my sound out there and I didn't want to do a hundred collaborations where it just sounds like one big song. I wanted to make it clear that it was my record and have a few collaborations on there. So I've achieved that and I'm really happy with that. You were saying in your, in your press release that you made a huge amount of memories whilst making this yeah. album. Which single memory encapsulates the journey that you took on this third album? It's hard to give you a single memory because just the whole year has been pretty amazing, to be honest. Um, I've had time to just focus on music and that's all I've done for the past year. So just the whole process of the album's been a great memory. I've, there hasn't been one song. Sometimes you, you record songs and you just know it's not gonna make the album. And I haven't had that moment. I've just loved being in the studio, loved working with new people. I love working with new talent, it's exciting. Um, and I like eating all the junk food in the studio, the cookies and the, the bad stuff. How is this third album representative of where you're at? 
personally and in life right now? I think whenever you make music, um, whether or not you write a song or you just like a beat and you get someone else to write to that, it's a feeling. And I think you feel where I'm at when you listen to this album. It's uplifting, it's emotional. That's just me anyways, <laughs> forever. Um, it's energetic, it's got ballads, it's a mixture of everything on there. It just feels right. It feels like I'm a woman. What's, what song do you identify the most with out of, of all of the 11 songs on the album? Uh, you know, it changes, it changes daily. I've got a song on there called Mechanics of the Heart, um, which for me was a different take on doing a, a love song, if you like. You always hear female artists singing about heartbreak or how they've had their heart broken, and this is actually singing about a guy that has his, his heart broken and I'm trying to say to him, if you don't believe this can work, how am I supposed to help you mend your heart? Just because she hurt you doesn't mean I will. And that was really interesting for me. It was a different take on heartbreak. Because um, the rest of them are like that. I've got a song called Sexy Than A Mother. Bleeper. Uh, which is fun. So they, they've all just got their own little meaning. And I suppose it depends on what mood I'm in that day, what I'm identifying with. But today it was Mechanics of the Heart. I was enjoying listening to you. It's really weird that I enjoy listening to my own album. Or is that normal? That's it's normal. a positive thing. Yeah. <laughs> if you can imagine a DJ playing a song in any club in the world, who would it be and where would the song be played? It would be Will I Am playing it in Vegas. Amazing. Sin City, <laughs> all the way, playing. We have a song called Craziest Things. I think most couples will identify with. I love the idea of a couple being in a club and singing it together. Yeah. Where was your favourite place to party in the world? Oh, you know what? It doesn't matter where you are in the world. I've discovered this from... Because uh, I've partied all over the world. It's who you're with. It's the vibe you're with. And the DJ has a massive responsibility. If you've got a whack DJ, forget it. Yeah. You could be in the best place. You could be in paradise. If he's going to play rubbish songs, it's over. You could be in a dump. And if you are surrounded by your friends with a good DJ, it's the best night ever. So I'd say it's more who you're with than where you are. What was it like working with Calvin Harris? Calvin's a legend. He's the, he's the man at the moment. And it doesn't matter where you go, you hear a record of his being played. Um, it's a privilege to work with them. It's a privilege to work with talented people like that. Do you ever get intimidated? I used to. First time I ever did a record for the solo record was with Will. And he doesn't make you feel intimidated by any stretch. He's very warm and funny and witty and, and cool. But I allowed myself to get like, it's Will, you know? And he has a, he has a song right, you know, right to it. So the first track I ever did to my first solo record was a track called Heaven, and I had to just sit there and write it. That is so intimidating that I don't think I'll ever feel like that again, because I'm more experienced now. How does it feel to know that you could have that impact upon someone else, to, that somebody else could see you and feel so starstruck? weird. It's a crazy thing to think. I hope I don't make people feel like that. I hope not. When you look back over the 10 years of, the, of your career now, how, how does it, how does it feel? Does it feel like it's been 10 years? Is there? It's funny because part of it feels like yesterday and some of it feels like a lifetime ago. Um, but a decade in music, you know, it's a, it's a blessing really. This industry's not easy and to be able to say that we've had a decade in music is pretty incredible. Where do you see yourself in the next 10 years' time? Never think that far ahead. Okay. Take each day as it comes, and if you're happy, you're doing a good job. Can you give us a wink before you go? Yeah. 